Hello everyone, this is our third and last lecture for chapter 12, an introduction to ANOVA. In our last video, we looked at ANOVA notations and formulas. In this lecture video, we will discuss ANOVA post hoc tests and assumptions. As was discussed earlier, the primary advantage of ANOVA compared to t-tests is that it allows us to test for significant mean differences when there are more than two conditions or groups. ANOVA does this by comparing all of the individual mean differences simultaneously within a single test. Unfortunately, the process of combining several mean differences into a single test statistic creates some difficulty when it is time to interpret the outcome of the test. Specifically, when you get a significant F ratio, it simply means that somewhere among the entire set of mean differences, there is at least one that is significantly significant or statistically significant. In other words, the overall F ratio only tells you that a significant difference exists. It does not tell you exactly which means are significantly different and which are not. Post hoc tests are additional hypothesis tests that are done after an ANOVA to determine exactly which mean differences are significant and which are not. More specifically, these tests are done after, after ANOVA when 1. you reject the null and 2. there are three or more treatments. Remember that when we conduct multiple comparisons, we increase the probability of type 1 error, experiment-wise alpha. Post hoc tests use special methods to try to control experiment-wise type 1 error rates. There are many different types of post hoc tests. We are just going to look at three of them. We start with the most commonly used in psychological research, the Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference Test. It is a moderately conservative post hoc test, and it is appropriate when you want to conduct all pairwise comparisons. The Chaffe test uses an extremely cautious method for reducing the risk of type 1 error, and so is considered one of the most conservative of all possible post hoc tests. The Bonferroni adjustment is the simplest to calculate. It is calculated as alpha divided by the number of comparisons. So with alpha equal to 0.05 and three comparisons or three groups, our adjusted alpha is equal to 0.05 divided by three, which is equal to 0 0.01667. And with 10 comparisons, our adjusted alpha is equal to 0.05 divided by 10, which is equal to 0 0.005. The more comparisons, the more difficult it will be to reject the null hypothesis. The basic relationship between t statistics and f ratios is that f is equal to t squared. This relationship can be explained by looking at the structure of the formulas for f and t. The t statistic compares distances, the distance between two sample means in the numerator and the distance calculated for standard error in the denominator. The f ratio, on the other hand, compares variances. You should remember that variance is a measure of squared distance, so the relationship f is equal to t squared. The assumptions for a one-way ANOVA are the same assumptions required for the independent samples t-test. One, observations within each samples must be independent. Two, populations from which samples are selected must be normal. And three, 
populations from which samples are selected must have equal variances, or this is homogeneity of variance. Next, I will post a video that walks you through an ANOVA hypothesis test.